Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Ian Chalmers of Alkane Resources. How are you today, Ian? Great, thanks, Tracy. Ian, I hope you don't mind, but I know you've been traveling a lot, and I'd love to get your feedback on the Singapore conference, and in particular Dudley's presentation. Uh, I read his title was, The Global Rare Earths Industry Today Plagued by Illegal Production in China. Can you comment on this? Uh, yes, yeah, so it, it was a theme that, that Dudley's been sort of promoting now for probably two years, that, that the Chinese really aren't in control of their rare earth industry, and that's simply what it is at present. Uh, because the illegal rare earths are really probably 30% or 40% of production. And until they either eradicate that or control it or do whatever they have to do to it, we're never going to be sure. And it's, and it's putting a lid on the, on rare earth demand, on rare earth prices. And uh, and what's even more disturbing, and this is this is Dudley's view, obviously, um, is that it would appear that a number of major consumers are uh, accessing these illegal rare earths. And it's, that's disappointing that... Uh, that we do have a number of Western companies actually accessing those rare earths. Well, after 29 years, this is your anniversary at Alkane, working there for 29 years. What I'd really love is your opinion. What do you think? Are the um, illegal uh, exports uh, plaguing the industry? Oh, absolutely. I have no doubt in my mind at all that that's what's going on. It's just they're, they're effectively undercutting the demand or oversupplying the demand and keeping prices low, and there's no doubt it's happening, and it's just, it's very disappointing for an industry that's going through a very tough time. Well, you just had your AGM, and of course, for our Investor Intel audience, then everyone that knows you, and your company is fantastic for being transparent, and this was one heck of a jam-packed uh, PowerPoint presentation. Every page was full of questions for you, so let me start <laughs> with uh, something I found interesting. I, I didn't realize that you had a uh, total income of 102.5 million last year, and that you have nearly two, uh, 20 million in cash and bullion present presently. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Yes, and the nice thing about all of that is that we made about uh, 28 million free cash flow out of that operation, or out of the gold operation. So yes, we we are in a very sound financial position going forward. Well, everybody talks to me. Find me a company with revenue. Okay. Investors, we have a company here with revenue, and uh, you only have a ninety million mar uh, ninety million dollar market cap. What should we expect in this upcoming year for revenue? Uh, this is specifically with your gold project, right? Yeah, yeah. Look, look. Revenue and, and cash return should be about the same, uh, even though the gold price has weakened a bit in the last month or so. We should we should come out around about the same. You know, probably hundred million plus revenue, twenty twenty five million cash flow out of the business. So. Look, it's a great little business. It's ticking along nicely, underpins everything that we're doing and has been funding all the, the pre-construction work for Dubbo, which is the most important thing. And of course, I was just about to say, the most important thing for many of us, technology, metal bugs and sustainability uh, directed investors, is of course your Dubbo Zirconia project. Um, I noticed that you are expecting your environmental uh, protection license and mining lease is uh, anticipated shortly. What's happening with that and, and can you give us an update? Yeah, look, they're very close. Um, and these, these really are just bureaucratic processes. Um, the main project approval we were given back in May from the state uh, and we had federal government environmental approval in August. So the, the two key things are done. These are just processes that we have to go through the mining lease before we can actually start work on the ground and the, and the EPL, which enables us to start construction. So important steps, but, but just bureaucratic steps. And we hope to see both of them before the end of the year. Before the end of this year? This year, correct. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. We've, been, we've been promised them by the end of the year. All right. So it sounds to me like this is a great opportunity for investors to pull up their sleeves over the holidays and really learn about alkane resources. And I'm sure your shareholders will be thrilled. Of course, uh, Dubbo has zirconium, niobium, yttrium, and rare earths. And I noticed in your PowerPoint that you focused on zirconium first. Was that uh, did you do that for a reason, or is it because of the Chinese dominate 85 to 90 percent of the zirconium market? It's it's a simple fact is that the bulk volume of what we produce is zirconium. And hence the, the, the project name has always been the Dubbo Zirconia project. Much to the chagrin of a lot of people, they'd like to give us a new name. And we actually had a, an internal competition in the staff to say, give us a new name. And I, I can't tell you what some of them are because they're not really for public uh, 
public uh, use. But um, some interesting names. We will stick to the Dubbo Zirconia project for now. But yes, it is. It's it's due to the it's the largest volume of our output. Well, of course, uh, the Eccle Christopher Ecclestone and Investor Intel loves your hafnium. I think he did a piece on Alkane's destiny is to dominate because of your hafnium deposit. Um, now, it's my understanding that this de demand depends really on uh, nuclear energy and the de demand from the nuclear industry sector. Uh, can you give us any comments on whether or not you see any recovery? I mean, a lot of us uh, nuclear energy bugs out there keep waiting for the yeah. bottom, and we still seem to have not hit it yet. Actually, it's interesting. I, mean, I won't comment on the nuclear industry because I'm really not, you know, not uh, competent to do that. Uh, but on hafnium, actually, the big driver for the last two years has been aerospace. Um, the the demand in aerospace is exponential. It's, it's rapidly growing, and it's used in new special alloys for jet engine and jet engines and turbines and those things. So, it's actually a very high demand interesting metal that has lots of applications, but right now really driven by aerospace. So the, the nuclear component has been pretty flat, and that's the reason why two years ago the price for hafnium metal was about $400 a kilogram. Today it's $1,500 a kilogram. So, and that's all driven by aerospace. And, and we all know from past experience in the rare earth industry that those sorts of prices are not sustainable. And that's what we, we're trying to sell ourselves to aerospace and other, other advanced industries is we can provide long-term a secure supply of hafnium at a sensible price, at a sustainable price. You know, look, at, look at this brosium argument, for example. We saw the same thing with this brosium in magnets. The price went through the roof in 2011 and suddenly all of the companies ran around trying to find uh, ways to engineer this brosium out of permanent magnets. So what we're saying is with hafnium, don't do that because we can provide you a long-term sustainable hafnium supply. And that's a big driver for us. Well, it is a big driver. I mean, you've had a lot of marketing and offtake agreements with a num number of major companies. For those investors out there excited about what's about to happen here for Alkane, can you give us kind of an overview about what you currently have in place? Yeah, it's, it's actually the key things that are the niobium. We have a, an arrangement in place or a joint venture in place with Tribarker in Austria uh, to produce ferroniobium and market ferroniobium. Uh, the, zirconium, the zirconium marketing arrangement, it's very close to being finalised and maybe, hopefully, we'll have that uh, done early in the new year as well. On the rare earths, it's now dependent very much on where we go with our toll treat uh, because if we produce a, a separated rare earth concentrate and what we do with that will depend on where our new market. So lots and lots of great discussions but nothing signed just yet on, on rare earth offtake. Okay, well, what about the funding timeline? I hate to bring this up, but this is such a, a challenge in the resource market here this last year, uh, but obviously you have some amazing partners and some large-name industrial partners are going to help see you through. Uh, can you comment on this? Yeah, well, look, well, the strategy has always been a combination. I mean, these sort of big projects are very difficult to, fo to finance in one source. And so we've always talked about strategic investment and we believe that there are opportunities for us to bring in partners who have either interest in offtake or other long-term strategic requirements. And, you know, somewhere between 10 and 20%, so we, we believe we can sell down. And then the big driver is what we call export credit agencies, the ECAs. And these are effectively government banks that are there to promote industry in countries. And obviously the US has one, Canada has one. Australia has them, but we're largely talking to the European and, uh, and Asian ECAs uh, because they'll be very important to financing the project because you need that strategic component to convince financiers to put money in. So that's those two are the key drivers for us. And then the third one is, is normal commercial debt and then finally back to the equity market. But we hope that the equity market will be the last step in that, that process. And, of course, you have an amazing team. Can you talk to me just a little bit about the timetable that we should be anticipating here, maybe over the next two quarters, obviously starting with the uh, environmental protection license and mining lease? As I said, I, I'm very confident both of those will be done before the end of the year, so we can, we can tick those out. Um, I'm sure the, the zirconium marketing sales agreement will be done early in the new year. That'll be great. Uh, I'm sure we'll sign off on the toll treatment agreement maybe end of quarter one next year. 
And then the, the strategic and ECA type financing, I think you'll see come in in stages sort of from middle of the year going forward towards the end of the year. So they, they are all staged over that time. And it'd be lovely to sit here and say, yes, we'll have the billion dollars in the bank uh, by the end of the year. But I think it will be staged over a period of time, maybe 18 months. Well, Ian, thank you so much for your update today. It's great to see you. Thanks, Tracy. Nice to talk to you again.